there's purpose in your pain. Whenever it feels like the devil is attacking, when he's testing you, it's important to remember that sometimes God's preparation comes packaged as pain. Sometimes God's preparation, it comes packaged as pain. In other words, there is a purpose in your pain. God might be using the pain that we're enduring to do something in us before he does something through us. Maybe the very thing that you've dreaded the most is what God might use to develop you in a way that he can only use that. In fact, the stronger the pain might be an indication of the bigger the purpose that God has on the other side. So when I don't see the point and I feel like my life is being dismantled, could it be that God's preparation comes packaged as pain? And maybe if you could see it that way, it wouldn't take the pain away, but it would give the pain a purpose. If you could see what you've been calling a failure really wasn't a failure. It was a foundation. See, it doesn't, it doesn't tell you when it shows up, I am your preparation. I believe in this. The, 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 the thing that you saw as a betrayal, what if you just decided, I'm not going to see it as a betrayal anymore? He was preparing me. Pain is an instrument in God's hand to sow into you perseverance, to put something good in you. That's what a good parent does. That's what a good teacher does. I'm going to put you in pain, but for a purpose. Not to destroy you, but to build you. To sow into you perseverance, the ability to abide even under greater weight. There's purpose in your pain today. God will use it for great purposes if you allow him. He uses this test of faith. That testing carries the idea of a refiner's fire. He's assuming you have faith. This is someone who trusts God, believes God's guiding their story, and that faith is put into a fire. Why? To purify it, to make it better than it is now. And so God will do that with your life. And if you understand that, you can have joy even in the pain. No matter what kind of pain you're going through right now, or no matter what kind of pain you're going to go through in the future. It may be physical pain. It may be emotional pain. It may be spiritual pain. Uh, it may be financial or relational or, or mental, mental pain. You will be far better prepared to handle pain. You'll be far better prepared to cope with it if you focus on the potential benefits and the possible purposes of that pain. We all go through disappointments, setbacks, loss. Pain is a part of life. It's easy to get discouraged, even bitter. Think, why is this happening to me? The key is what we do in our times of pain. Pain will change us. Heartache, loss, disappointments, they don't leave us the same. If you go through a divorce, a legal battle, a friend betrays you, eventually that will pass. You'll get through it but you will be different. Now, how the pain changes you is up to you. You can come out bitter or you can come out better. You can come out with a chip on your shoulder blaming God, or you can come out stronger with a greater confidence in God. You can come out defeated, giving up on your dreams, or you can come out with a new passion, a new fire, excited about the new opportunities in front of you. All of us experience pain. My challenge, don't just go through it, grow through it. That difficulty is an opportunity to get stronger, to develop character, to gain new confidence. Anybody can give up. Anybody can let it overwhelm you. But you know what that's doing? Wasting your pain. That pain is not there to stop you. It's there to prepare you, to increase you, to develop you. Use pain to draw closer to God and trust Him more. Use the pain in your life to draw closer to God and trust Him more. 
You know, when anything painful happens, uh, you, you've got a choice. You can either run to God or you can run from God. God whispers to us in our pleasure, C.S. Lewis said, but he shouts to us in our pain. And thousands of people's lives have come to know Christ out of pain or their lives were transformed by the process of learning to worship, learning to trust, learning to draw close to God when you're in pain. The Bible says God is close to the brokenhearted. God is never closer to you than when you're in pain. And many of you could say, pain turned me to Christ. Pain is an opportunity to grow in character uh, like Christ. But again, it's a choice. When, when you're in pain, you can be bitter or you can become better. Pain can be a stepping stone to maturity or a stumbling block to immaturity. It's not automatic. I don't even know who all your heroes are, but think about who they are. Most of them, I would guess, are people who went through incredible difficulty, and rather than being destroyed by it, they were improved by it. They got tougher skin and a softer heart. They got greater vision, and they got greater trust. Pain has potential locked into it to make you someone who can be used for great purpose. If you let it, I have a king who loves me. My instructor has put me in this crisis, not to crush me, but to teach me. And as I trust him, he will build me so I can praise even in the midst of the pain. You see, the fact is pain always transforms us, either for good or bad. It'll make us bitter or better. As I said, pain never leaves you where it found you. You know, I have studied uh, all my lifetime what makes great leaders and what makes great winners in life. And the number one quality of those who win in life, whether it's in sports or any other area, the number one quality is resilience. It is the ability to bounce back. Everybody stumbles, everybody falls, everybody has failures, everybody has pain and suffering. But those who actually make it in life, get up, pick themselves off, bounce back, and they have resilience. As the Bible says that the though a man falls seven times, a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. Everybody falls, but the righteous person gets back up again and keeps going. That's called resilience, that bounce back ability. We've all heard the saying, no pain, no gain. If everything was always easy, we wouldn't be prepared for our destiny. Some of the things I face today, if I would have faced them 10 years ago, they would have overwhelmed me. I couldn't handle it back then. God knows what you need when you need it. Every struggle is making you stronger. Every difficulty is growing you up. Every painful time, even though you don't like it, it's developing something in you that can only be developed in the tough times. Don't complain about the pain. Without the pain, we couldn't reach the fullness of our destinies. There is a purpose for the pain. We may not always understand it. Joel, why did I get sick? Why did I lose my loved one? Why did my marriage not make it? I can't answer that. But I can tell you, if God allowed it, he knows how to bring good out of it. This is what faith is all about. God, I don't like the pain, but I trust you. I believe you're in control. Now, I'm not going to just go through it. I'm going to grow through it. I'm going to keep a good attitude. I'm going to count it all joy, knowing that this pain is leading to my gain. Do not waste your hurt. Do not waste your pain. Let God use it. Your greatest ministry will come out of your deepest pain. Your greatest ministry will come out of your greatest weakness and failing. If you'll be honest to God, honest to others, and honest to yourself, it will become your ministry. In other words, who's better qualified to help a struggling veteran than somebody who's been a struggling veteran? Who's better qualified to help someone recover from a, a, an opioid or prescription drug addiction than somebody who's struggled with an addiction to opioid or prescription drugs? Who could better help someone who has uh, struggles with uh, a special needs child of some, some special need than the parents of a special needs child? When I share my strengths, that doesn't make us feel close. But when I share my, my weaknesses, you go, oh, it, it draws us close. If Rick has problems, then if God uses him, then maybe God could use me. 
When you share your pain, it helps you grow in Christ. And when you use your pain to minister to others who've gone through the same thing or going through what you've already gone through, that's called your ministry. Just like your deepest ministry will come out of your deepest hurt, your deepest life message will come out of your deepest pain. This is real, authentic witnessing. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Every area in your life where you've had pain, you've never thought about this, but it's true. Every area in your life where you've had pain, you have a testimony. So don't waste it. You say, I don't have a testimony. Oh, yes, you do. Have you ever had uh, gone through bankruptcy? Then you have a financial testimony. Have you ever had a marriage conflict? Then you have a marriage testimony. Have you ever had a rebellious child? You have a rebellious child testimony. You ever been in, had a, had a, had a heart attack or anything like that? Then you've got a physical testimony. Don't waste your pain. Don't waste your hurt. There are people all around you who are going now through what you've already gone through and they will listen to your story. Did Jesus experience pain? Oh, of course he did. Did Jesus experience times when he was lonely? Yes. When he was tempted to be discouraged? Yes. When he was simply tempted? Yes. Did, did Jesus have people misunderstand him and criticize him? Yes. You know, the greatest witness of God's love, the greatest example, the greatest demonstration of God's love was not Jesus's perfect life. The greatest witness of God's love was not Jesus's sermons. The greatest witness of God's love were not the miracles of Jesus. The greatest witness of God's love was the suffering that Jesus went through on the cross.